Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be interviewing a friend of mine from the Bay Area who's a stand-up comedian, as am I. Her name is Evelyn Erie Diamond. We call her Evie. And um, she's been making a lot of waves lately in the Bay Area stand-up comedy scene. Uh, in just such a short time, too. I mean, she is just absolutely amazing. And uh, we'll be talking to her today, talk about her beginnings and present career and just any random stuff that comes up and everything. And, yeah, it's going to be a pretty cool interview. This is my uh, birthday week coming up. I'm going to be 35 years old this week on Wednesday. And I'm going through kind of a pre midlife crisis because I haven't accomplished everything that I want to yet, but I uh, see the light at the end of the tunnel, and I know that with persistence and prevailing the persistence and hard work, I will accomplish everything I want to accomplish. So, happy birthday to me. And by the way, I share the same birthday with Robert England, Freddy Krueger. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, here's my interview with Evelyn Erie Diamond, a.k.a. Evie. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Evie. Welcome to the show. What's going on? Nothing much. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's my birthday week. Oh, yeah? Yep. Right on. How old are you turning? 35. That's not bad. Yeah, means I'm a male cougar. <laughs> <laughs> what do we call that, a lion maybe? I don't know. A lion, yeah, that could work. <laughs> that could work. <laughs> yeah, I was just telling my audience I feel like I'm going through a pre-midlife crisis because I haven't accomplished everything that I want to yet, and i got five years before I'm 40 to do so. Yeah. Well, you know, I always think to myself, um, figure out when about do you think you're going to die, and then cut that in half, and that's your midlife. So, <laughs> so how long do you think you're going to live for? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, i got a stent in my heart you know, from my car accident and everything. I mean, mm -hmm. I just got to, you know, be careful. Yeah, but you made it through that, so that means you're tough. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, maybe 100. You could live to be 100. Maybe. I hope so. It's always, the, it's always the ones that are doing really well that, like, we don't know what happened. Cut down the prime of their life. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you never know. You never know. Yeah, just hope for the best, I guess. You know? Mm-hmm. So, so I, I, well, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. So, I know that uh, you've only started doing stand-up comedy recently, but um, I'm just curious, um, what, did, what did you do before? I mean, like, what's your day job? <laughs> okay, so... Uh... Comedy about two years ago, right? And um, I actually did try it before that. Mm -hmm. um, I went to uh, a comedy college in San Francisco for six weeks, and then um, I started doing open mics. I did about three, and then I decided that I sucked, and I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and that was about fifteen years ago. <laughs> wow. And, um, and then uh, uh, about two years ago, I said, you know what, fuck it. <laughs> I don't know if I can cuss on your podcast, but... Uh, no, you can swear all you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always wanted to do stand-up comedy my whole life, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to... I'm just going to see. I'm just going to see. And I did uh, I did the open mic at Tommy T's, mm -hmm. and because uh, I was working out there, because I'm working out there, uh -huh. and... Um, and that night, uh, I was actually offered a showcase from mm -hmm. uh, one of the comics. And I said, oh, my God, this is great. And that's when that's kind of what kept me going. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which was awesome. And, 
We did job. So I basically, uh, I've been in customer service my whole life, retail my whole life, and uh, worked my way up from uh, selling cosmetics to being an account executive uh, for cosmetics companies, and I did that for forever, for 10, 15 years. That's what I was doing. I was in customer service, and I was I was a account executive, so I had you know different stores that um, I would go to every day, and it was kind of it was a crazy life because it was about fifty hours a week, and I didn't have time to do anything else. Yeah. And then I actually got uh, hired by a credit union to do the same thing uh, with dealerships. So car dealerships. So I go to car dealerships now mm -hmm. and say, hey, you want to send all your business to us? We'll get you the loan you need for your customers. And um, uh, so the nice thing about that, though, is I'm, I'm doing a similar job, but it is it is it ends at 5 o'clock, and uh, it is Monday through Friday. So mm -hmm. the nice thing about it is that and I have to get holidays off. So nice. now I have time to actually go and pursue my dream, which is stand up. And mm -hmm. um, because I have nights off and I have weekends off, and it works out really well for me. So oh. that's kind of in a in a nutshell what's going on with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, so you've worked in um, sales mostly. Yeah, and I I have to say that working in customer service, um, if you if, if there's any job that's going to prepare you for doing stand-up, for yeah. uh, relating to an audience, for, um, you know, trying to be on, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, in a sense, yeah. customer service is pretty much your best bet. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, you're originally from Palm Springs, right? Uh, that's where I grew up, yeah. I moved out here uh, to the Bay Area when I was about 20 years old to go to college and stayed because I, I knew from the time I was about 13 years old that I was going to live here in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I actually, uh, we used to come up here, I used to come up here with my family every couple of years to visit some, some relatives that lived here. And I remember I was 13 years old and we were sitting on in Union Square and uh, my mom was trying to hail a cab, and I said, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it, and I was trying to hail a cab, and I said, this is awesome, and I turned to my mom, and I said, you know what, when I grow up, I'm going to live here, mm -hmm. and my mom said, okay, whatever, kid. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's encouragement. And when I was, by the time I was 20 years old, uh, I had saved up enough money working, and, um, I was like, okay, I'm moving, mm -hmm. and my mom said, where, where, where do you, where do you think you're moving to? And I said, I'm moving to San Francisco. And I told you this when I was 13, and, you, and she goes, No, you're not. And I said, No, actually, I am, and I'm, ne and I'm never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, You'll be back. And I left, and I never came back. <laughs> wow. Did you did you have a lot of money growing up? No, 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 no. no. No, 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 no. We were, we were ultimately middle class. My, my mom is a nurse, mm -hmm. and uh, my, my, let's see, my dad worked for Southern California Edison. Mm -hmm. He was in the electric company, which is, which is basically PG&E for Southern California. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then they got divorced pretty early on when I was about 12, and then, um, she married a cop, and uh, so you know. We, I mean, you know, I was I couldn't be more middle class than you know. Yeah. There's no way to be more middle class than I was. <laughs> so we didn't have any money. <laughs> yeah, that was me too growing up. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say we were poor, but we weren't rich, you know. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. Same here. Uh, were you... Nothing to complain about, you know what I mean? No, no sad, sad stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were you? Yeah, I, could, I couldn't get the designer stuff, but that didn't mean there's really no sad stories there. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were you always uh, funny growing up? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, uh, my dad was was one of those guys who was always 
he was always funny. And he was the oldest of uh, five brothers. And wait, I'm sorry. Five, six, seven, no, there's more than that. There's uh, seven brothers. Um, and so when I would go visit my uncle, they, there was always, everyone was always trying to outdo each other, trying to out, you know, outsmart each other, uh, try to, you know, out, out <laughs> how do I say this? It was basically a, um, it was a, what do they call that? Um, a disc battle. Uh, <laughs> a disc battle? <laughs> yeah, a continuous, like, uh, a put down battle happening all the time and even as a little girl I was always trying to jump in for some weird ass reason Ooh. and uh, beat them and so I was just growing up just being trying to one up every every my dad my uncles everybody and mm-hmm. it ended up being uh, uh, a big part of who I am you know yeah so did you, you call me a smart ass maybe I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Did you grow up a tomboy? No, not at all. Not at all. I was very girly, very, very girly. And, um, but around, but, but there was always this thing where it was like, you know, just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I can't be as funny as you. Just it doesn't mean I can't out, out, uh, out joke you, uh, outrun you. I always had this weird thing where it was like, you can't just say just because I'm a girl that I can't do what you can do. And it, it, it's very much today, even today, is there's very much this thing of, uh, no, just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I'm not better than you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, I was still very girly. I've always been very girly. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was always very upset by the idea that, like, oh, you're just a girl. That would just piss me off. That would always piss me off. Yeah, all my all my friends are girls. They're all tomboys. Like I've been around it my whole life and stuff. That's what. Mm-hmm. That's probably why you and I get along so well. Because I just I just relate to women better. Mm-hmm. You know. And you know, it's funny. I relate to guys a lot better than I do ladies. Although I, you know, I have I have a lot of lady friends and. Uh, yeah. But it's just it's it's the the women that I'm friends with are very strong women. They're very uh, opinionated. They know who they are. There's no you know, loopiness about them, and, and I think um, it's it's just it's just the kind of people I like to relate to, you know? Mm-hmm. So, although I do know a lot of wimpy guys, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I consider myself a wimpy guy. <laughs> <laughs> just wimpy in the sense that sometimes they back down when I think they should be, you know, just uh, stand their ground. Uh, not even in like a... a violent way, more in a, like, opinion way, you know? Yeah. So. I don't know. I, I yeah, where did you grow up? Did you grow up around here? Yeah, San Mateo, California, born and raised there. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're from up here? Yep. Um, it's funny, a lot of people I know that uh, grew up up here, that they just stayed, which I, I very much respect, considering that I love it up here, so I totally get it. But... Well, not many of them are doing. Not many of them are doing it now because the rent's so damn high. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. But you know, what do you expect? I mean, I honestly, I mean, as much as I hate the fact that it's it's so tough to live here, mm-hmm. the economy because everything's so expensive. Yeah. You know, every. I mean, I I I travel a lot. My my passion is traveling. Um, yeah. And uh, I go all over the world, and I, I have to say, you know, every time I cross. A bridge. I'm like, wow, I can't believe I live here. Like this place is gorgeous, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's. I mean, it's like as much as it sucks because it is expensive to live here. Yeah. There's still that part of me that's like, yeah, but look how gorgeous it is, you know? Yeah. Um, and I travel. I travel all over. I mean, one of my goals is to hit every continent. I want to go to every single continent. I want to swim in every ocean in the world. <laughs> and um. You know, I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been a lot of places, and this is still the most beautiful place I've ever been. So that should tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So were so were you uh, into stand-up comedy growing up? Yeah, you know, um, I I always loved it. I always loved it. Who were your heroes when you were growing up? Were you into stand-up? 
Yeah, mine, oh, yeah, from the time I was two years old. Like, I, I can remember that far back. Um, I was into Sam Kinison, Bobcat Goldthwait, Andrew Dice Clay. Those were, like, my yeah. my, my guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, I remember when I first saw Sam Kinison. I'm a little older than you, so um, <laughs> I remember seeing Richard Pryor on Saturday Night Live. My, uh, my parents were really young. Mm-hmm. Um, they were they were in their early twenties when I was a little kid, and mm-hmm. so I remember staying up late to watch uh, Saturday Night Live with my dad, and um, seeing Richard Pryor. Seeing oh my God, Bill Murray is like, uh, even though he wasn't really a stand up person, mm-hmm. he's one of my heroes. Just, yeah. he's just funny. You know, he just he knows how to work. He he knows how to work what he works. You yep. know, and. Oh my God! And just watching those old Saturday Night Lives with, you know, Andy Kaufman and uh, John Belushi and uh, you know Gilda Radner. Oh my God, she's so good! And just, just you know, my my heroes growing up were. It's funny they weren't really stand up people. Um, of course, I loved Richard Pryor always. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, but I think my biggest heroes, honestly, uh, Madeline Kahn. Yeah. Gene Wilder. You know, those were my heroes. Like, those mm-hmm. were the people I wanted to be. Um, uh, Marty Feldman. Oh, my God. Just, just, <laughs> yeah. just meant so much to me. I was just like, I want to do that. You know, they're just, they're, they, it was, they were amazing to me, you know? And yeah. They were heroes to me. And um, even though they, it wasn't necessarily stand-up, it was just that being funny. I think that's what uh, just inspired me, you know? Yeah. I was I was uh, not just influenced by the stand-up comedians, but also uh, Jerry Lewis and um, the, the Saturday Night Live guys, Second City guys especially. John mm-hmm. Candy is like mm-hmm. a huge hero of mine. I almost got to meet him because my great uncle uh, was a friend of his. Oh, cool! That's yeah. very cool. Yeah, yeah, I have to meet Bill Murray before I die. Um, it's like my one of my big. Before he dies, I, should, I guess I should say, because he's a little older than me. <laughs> uh, I heard he's kind of a jerk. One of us dies. I have to meet him. <laughs> I heard he's kind of a jerk, though. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You know what? I don't. He doesn't need to be my friend. I just need to meet him. That's it. I just need to tell him, you're cool. You're amazing. It's a Cinderella story. You're amazing. And then be done with it. That's all I have to do. That's it. That's all I have to do. <laughs> Yeah, I had PJ yeah. Souls on the show, who was in stripes with him, and she told me, uh, yeah, she told me what, what a jerk he can be. And, and, and funny thing is, I've heard her do lots of interviews. You know, mm-hmm. she she always talks nicely and stuff, right? But I gave her the permission to go balls out on this show, so she told me, uh, nah, he's a jerk. He's rude to everybody. You know? Oh no! <laughs> yeah. yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah. It happens, but you know, I don't know what would I be like if I if I was ever at that level. I'm not sure. You know, I'd hope I wouldn't be a jerk, but you never know. You never know. I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I get it. You know. Yeah. But um, that's funny. She said no. He just and said. Stripes he's... is actually one of my favorite movies, actually. <laughs> oh yeah, it's one of the funniest comedies ever made. I love that movie. I love that movie too. But no, she just said he's just, you know, he's very serious and depressed when he's not performing. He's at his happiest when he's performing, you know? I could see that. I could see that. That's, and you, know, that's, you know what's funny is even in the regular comedy scene, you'll find that. Yeah. Um, I'm usually the happiest person in the room when I talk to other comedians. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw that from you. I'm actually having fun, and I'm so, I'm so happy just to be there. Hey, how you doing? And everybody else is depressed, and you know, I yep. think uh, it's it's really interesting when you. I, I'm, I'm sure I know you've had the same experience because you've been in comedy for a long time. How long have you been doing comedy? Since 2006. Yeah, so a really long time, and yep. um, it's it's funny. Uh, a lot of comedians are very they're not very fun to hang out with. Nope. <laughs> interesting to me. Um, I'm, I, you know, I keep, I keep the depression and everything for when I'm not around people. But it's funny because comedians will be sitting there and they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're bitchy and a lot of them are bitchy and depressed and yep. <laughs> not pleasant to hang nope. out with. And, and honestly. 
honestly, the funniest thing about it is they're not funny when they're not on stage. Nope. So weird. <laughs> I know. It's just, it, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks when I first started doing it. I was like, what's up with these guys, you know? Because I'm expecting them to be like they are on stage, you know? I, I didn't know mm-hmm. because there was no, there was, you know, the internet was just taking off. There was no podcast yet. I didn't know how they were, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's really crazy. I, and as I, pursue, as I pursue it more, it's just more and more crazy. <laughs> so weird it's just so weird to me that like you know i'm trying to have a conversation with people and i'm trying to you know be funny and just you know and not even trying to be funny but just you know i'm a i'm a funny person just in general i Mm -hmm. I, you know not even my material i mean i I, i'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything i just i'm like a fun person but a lot of comedians are not fun they're not having fun they're not enjoying themselves they're not you know in their regular lives so it's really interesting uh, sometimes when you talk to comedians and they're bitter and jaded, and I'm like, you're jaded, you're not even famous. Like, why are you so jaded? <laughs> they want to be famous. <laughs> it's just hilarious. I'm like, you know, I can understand if you were jaded because of, you know, the business. I work so hard, beats me down. But come on, guys. You're, come on. <laughs> I, I fucking right. tell. This is the fun part of our day. Right now. Yeah. You know? I, I fucking tell any comedian in the Bay Area, you want to be famous, get the fuck out of the Bay Area. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's true. It's true. I mean, there yeah. is, there's a few that are, that are that are doing well, that are st- that still, um, you know, live around here, but they travel a lot and stuff. But Yeah. Um, and, they're, and they're making it, you know. It's just, um, but it's, it, it, you know, it's, but then again, then again, you know, this is a different kind of comic, a different kind of scene, from what I've heard, anyways. Yeah. Uh, that it's just different, you know. It's a different kind of scene. You can do it. You just have to uh, be relentless. You know. I right. mean, Kabir, Kabir's doing it, yep. and um, he's, you know, he's got a special on Hulu, and he's doing a great job, and he does continuously working, and um, he's doing a great job. And there's a few people out there that are that are that are making it. You know, they still live around here. But you just got to really spread yourself around. That's the biggest thing. You know, get yourself yeah. in front of the right people. So when I, when I started in 2006, there was a dozen guys that I had high hopes for that ended up quitting. And then there was about, and then there's about 12 who are in L.A. right now and doing very well. And only, mm-hmm. only about nine or ten of them I really like. And... Mm-hmm. Then um, there's a bunch of them uh, still in the Bay Area. Uh, Joe Gorman, who's actually moving to New York, and I'm really yeah. pr- I'm really proud of him because I've been saying since the day I met him, "You're a New York comic. Get the fuck out of here." <laughs> yeah, he really is a New York comic. He really is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He really is. It's a, it's a. I think that personality for New York, you know. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, he's gonna do really well. He's. He's already a super, he's already a star here, but yeah, he's gonna he's gonna take off. Oh, he's gonna, um, he's, he's gonna explode at the cellar. I know it. Mhm. It's really cool. It's really cool. Have you have you ever uh, explored doing other towns or anything like that? Oh yeah, I did. Uh, in the beginning, I was I lived in Arizona for a short time, uh, within a year of starting comedy because, um, uh, long story short, my mom's ex boyfriend who was a schmuck, he bought us a house, and. Um, I, I tried to explore a comedy scene out there. They're very politically correct, and I'm not. So I was just like, "Fuck this! I'm out of here." And um, uh, I'm, you know, I'm here in Reading. There's no comedy scene here. I want to go to Sacramento, but I don't drive. So I'm just, you know, doing my podcast doesn't mean to being funny. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, I tried Arizona, and it just wasn't right for me. Can you, let's see, how far away are you from Sacramento? Uh, about two and a half hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got to get somebody to help you out with that. Yeah. got to be somebody that wants to go to Sacramento every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, of course, and I did, of course, L.A., which I didn't do much research for, and it, was, it ended up being a waste of time. But now I know a lot more, and I'm going to give it another chance eventually, you know. 
So. Well, that's good. Yeah. So, okay, so 15 years ago, you took um, a comedy class for 15 years, you said. Or 15, <laughs> what was it? Six weeks. Uh, I took it for six weeks. Yes. And uh, basically, let me tell you what this was. Uh, okay. Uh, so, the thing that it helped me with was um, just the idea of getting on stage. Right. And kind of the idea of being comfortable up there. And I'd always, I always have been one of those people who's like, give me a mic, give me a mic, give me a mic. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily that as much as it was just having confidence when you get up there. And, mm-hmm. you know, I love being on stage. I love it. And so it, it, uh, it and it taught me basics, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it, and it's funny because a lot of people don't know basics. I mean, I've posted a couple of open mics and it's like, you know, uh, basics. Um, somebody called your name. You walk up to the stage, you shake the hand. Um, if you pull the mic out of the mic stand and you put the mic stand beside you, behind you, before you leave the stage, you put the mic stand back in the middle, you put the mic back in the, back in the stand, you shake the hand, and then you walk off. Like, it's just basics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, and it, it taught me those basic things. There's basic, um, uh, you know, rules of comedy. You know, um, yeah. uh, be be gracious when you get a set. Be mm-hmm. to, the, to to whoever booked you. You know, be, oh, yeah. be there on time. Yeah, um, um, like I said, you know, shake the hand. Um, uh, the, the big one that I've noticed is that you know, before you leave the stage, say your name again. You know, if, they, yeah. if the audience thinks you're funny, they want to know who the fuck you are. You know, so say your name again. Thank you very much. I'm Mary Diamond. Have a great night. You know, be gracious to the audience. Be, you know, it's just, mm-hmm. just basic things that I learned uh, way early on that mm-hmm. I think um, it's funny because when I see new comics, they don't, there's little things they don't get, little nuances they don't understand. And, um, you know, don't attack your audience. You know, um, they're there for you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yep. if, if you're going to, if you're going to tease them and stuff, that's, that's different. If they're going to, if they're going to, they're gonna heckle you. You can heckle back, but don't, don't, you know, you don't want it to be like fuck all of you. You know, those those are your people. Mm-hmm. Without people, you're just standing up there alone. So, right. you know, bring the room in, um, read the room. You know, um, just just all the things I learned. <laughs> because that class was one of those things where uh, we'd have the class, and then afterward, everybody would go. Um, down to the Purple Onion. Uh, Purple Onion is yep. in North Beach. Do you, do you know that? Oh, yeah, I used to go there. That? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so um, we would go there, and then all the people that were in the class, of course, would get, uh, would get stage time. Mm-hmm. And, and there was usually a little audience going. And, and so I learned a bunch of things about just basic stuff about being on stage. And I have to say that even then, you know, I didn't have a ton of material yeah. Uh, and, and what I had was pretty rudimentary, but the the fact that I learned the basics of, you know, you, you can't make a dress till you know how to sew. You know what I mean? Like it was one yeah. of those things where I learned very, very basic things about comedy um, that really have helped me. And, and uh, I see a lot of newer comics, like I said, when I host open mics, that don't know the very basic parts of it. And I want to be, I want to be a dick and be like, you know, Okay, guys, well, you newbies, this is basic etiquette, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think it's a huge part of, you know, it, you just, you have to, it's like table manners, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you, it's just etiquette. You have to know the basics in order to understand, you know, and then everything else is all about you. Can you write a joke? Can you perform a joke? Can you, do you have, uh, uh, originality, are you comfortable on stage, like all these basic things that I think you know, uh, the battle continuously trying to perfect you know Yeah. Um, you know, and learning I, 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 I know you know this you know, the more you get up and tell a joke, the more you learn about that joke so what works, what doesn't work yep. um, uh, a set of words, you know what I mean Yeah. I, I have a joke about um I have a joke about, uh, you know, I want to I wanna make a thong with a merkin on it. 
and then I explained to the audience, I explained to the audience what a merkin is. Yeah. And uh, the first time I talk about it, I say, uh, you know, it's a it's a toupee for your cooch, you know. <laughs> and then I talk about why you need it, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, when they make a movie uh, and someone's supposed to have a bush, you need to have, you know, they need to have a bush, so they put a wig on your puss, you know. And it's <laughs> but it's a choice of words. Like there's certain words that you're using, yeah. Um, and they're different enough, but they're they're you know it's it's just it's. I, I feel like for me, I feel like the words are so important when you're when you're writing the joke, when you're crafting the joke, you know. Yeah. And you tell it in front of an audience, and you figure out if it's working. If it's not working, then you're like, "Fuck, I gotta change it." <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> so, you know, you know how this is, yep. you know. <laughs> sure do. I my my comedy has remained the same, but it's just changed in different contexts over the years and stuff. It's just you know, a never ending task, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Pretty um, much. And, oh, I was going to tell, I was going to, I was going to tell the story to the audience about the first time I saw you on stage. Okay. The first time I ever saw you on stage was in November of 2016 at Rooster Tea Feathers. Uh, we were both scheduled that night. You went on uh, early and then you left. And I was just, impressed at how good you were and how good your stage presence was that after you after you, you had left early and I didn't get to meet you, I friended you on Facebook and messaged you and stuff. And then uh, we hung out during the contest uh, like a few months later and stuff. I think I, I think I won you over when I told you that I was into double penetration. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you giggled like a like, school. This is an interesting guy. <laughs> well, you gig- you giggled like a schoolgirl, like you are now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, I remember that, and um, yeah, that was actually not a great night for me. I had I had some good, I had some some jokes that hit, and then I had a couple jokes that didn't hit, and I mm-hmm. remember getting off the stage thinking, oh man, um, <laughs> this is not my crowd. <laughs> But, uh, but then again, you know, I'm, I'm from the school of, it's not the crowd, it's you. So if, it, yeah. if you didn't connect with the audience, you didn't connect with the audience. It's not the audience's fault. It's, you know, you, you got to figure out how you're going to connect with them. And um, I learned, a, I, you know, I, it's a continuous journey learning from mm-hmm. comedy. I, um, I have to say there's been a few shows where I had a, I had a set list that I was going to do. And as I got to know the audience from what they were laughing about, what they weren't laughing about, uh, I realized I needed to change it up. Uh, you know, this, this, this crew is going to be happier with stuff that's more about, you know, uh, whatever it is. You know, my life, my marriage, stuff like that. These, that that's who, what they're going to relate to. And I, I feel like um, really kind of feeling out your audience and then, and then changing it up accordingly. I remember when I first started, I would never change it up. It was like I would rehearse a set and that was my set and that mm-hmm. was it. And I wouldn't go, I would not go anywhere from there. <laughs> and um, a good friend of mine, Mean Dave, uh, yep. told me, he said, you know what you're really good at is is your connection with the audience. Um, when you talk to the audience, um, it, it's your most authentic you. And uh, and I, I actually wrote some jokes that are specifically so I can start a conversation with the audience um, mm-hmm. because of that. And it, it, it helps you to kind of understand who, you, who you're dealing with so mm-hmm. you can change it up if you have to. And um, it's, uh, it's, it, it's fun. I mean, it, it, it's scary. It's, very, it's a lot more scary than just going up there and doing what you rehearsed. But I have to say that you get a lot more out of it. Um, when you know that when you left, they were like, wow, she got me. Even though, you know, the audience isn't supposed to feel like the comedian. It, you know, it's not a conversation, but it's it's good when you get off the stage and, and the audience thinks, wow, you you totally get me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something that I've, I've been honing in. On. It's helped me a lot in my comedy. Oh, that's so. good. Have you, have you mastered crowd work yet? Um, in a way. In a way, I don't think I've mastered it as much as uh, some some comedians. Um, 
comedians are all about it. I mean, um, I, I did a show with Chelsea Garrett at the, uh, at the uh, Sacramento Punchline recently, and she just, that, mm-hmm. that was her whole show. She just walked, she basically went around the entire audience, spoke to them, uh, figured out what they were all about, um, and just, and just that's all she did, and it was mm-hmm. just killer. She did an amazing job. I look up to her so much, and um, she just killed it. And I, I am not at that level whatsoever. In fact, I I'm very much one of those people who's like I have to have a reason to talk to the audience, and then once yeah. I get them in a conversation, I'm pretty good because I'm pretty good on the fly. Um, and I I like I said, you know, I think that's my my smart assness. Of yeah, <laughs> having a good comeback for everything, um, but I don't. I don't think I have the balls to go out there and just do crowd work. Uh, I really no. don't. I don't. I think I would be so scared of, you know, you meet that one person that you're like, hey, what's your name? What do you do? And they're just like nothing, and you're just like, oh, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cr- I don't think I'm a master at that yet, but. <laughs> yeah. Crowd, crowd work is a specialty of mine, but I try to do as little of it as possible when I'm up there, and mm-hmm. I really gotta find something really good to like say to them, you know. But um, mm-hmm. what do you think about that whole new that 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 new roast battle thing that's been going on? I, I'm personally against it. Oh, you know what? I, I it's not for me, but um, yeah. but I've seen some of them and they're pretty funny. Uh, I. It's not for me, though. It's not, I just, it's not, um, I just, I, I just don't, I don't have it in me. <laughs> this is. I mean, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I, could, I could probably destroy you if I didn't like you, but I don't know if I could just do it for fun. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. It's just not my thing. It's just not my thing. I think, you know, it can be funny. Uh, I've seen a few and, and they were pretty funny. Um. I'm not necessarily against it, but it's just not for me, you know? It's just, it's not my thing. Yeah, the the problem that I have with it is this. Back in the 70s, when you had the Dean Martin roast, right? All the... Mm -hmm. All the people who roasted each other, they were all friends, they knew each other, it was all in good fun. Then the Comedy Central roast started, started this. They just, you're roasting all these people you don't even know, and it just comes off as mean-spirited, right? And... Right. Recently, I was the victim of something really bad. I had a, a huge Facebook blow up with, uh, you know, Pete Munoz. Okay. Yeah, I've met him. Yeah. He and I have hated each other for years. He's the biggest asshole in the world. And so we got into a, a huge blow up, right? And he, and mm-hmm. he recruits a lot of his, his comedian friends to like, to like um, talk on his behalf and say shit to me. But one of them... Uh, was up on stage um, recently when I, I came down to the Bay to work on some sets for uh, my most recent America's Got Talent audition, and mm-hmm. he he started like he started like um, doing crowd work, and he and this and this this guy started um, uh, uh, attacking me, and he was he was using Pete's words, and I and I know this guy. Just, I've only met him like a couple of times. We've never had a conversation and we don't know each other, but he was like talking on his behalf and I was pissed, you know, and he did it again the next night. And then I was, I was about ready to punch him and a friend of mine told me not to do it and stuff. But if I had seen him a third time and he did that, oh, I, I would have said, hey, tell Pete to say it to my fucking face. You know what I mean? Yeah, this this is not you know in good fun. This is you know this is a personal attack he's doing to me, you know. Wow, why are why are you guys enemies? What happened? He fucking. Okay. I mean, I don't I don't know him very well, so I don't know um, that much about him. But we used um, to we used to go to this uh, p- this place in Belmont, uh, the Lariat, for open mic comedy night, and the guy who was hosting, he and I got into it over a misunderstanding. I was like promoting the comedy night and saying that I was going to be there and stuff. And I forgot to like mention him that he was the host and everything. So it kind of made it sound like it was all about me and not about him. So it was a big misunderstanding. Right. And pizza, pizza sheep, you know, he'll follow anybody. You know, he's one of those guys. If, uh, if his friends don't like you, he don't like you type of thing, you know? So once I started pursuing comedy three years ago, 
and stuff, and I started killing, he just could not handle it because he saw me bomb so much, like, in the early years, you know? And I, I did the uh, Rooster Tea Feathers contest um, in 2016, and he was literally the only one in the audience not laughing. He was depressed that I was killing and doing well. So he basically, he's just jealous is what he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. It's just, wow. It's just yeah, a, it sucks to have enemies in, in the scene, too, because it's not a very big scene, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's very inter interconnected. Uh, so it can be it can be tough. I don't I don't have any enemies, thank goodness. Um, yeah. You know, but uh, you know, I have people that aren't fans. <laughs> for sure, have that. <laughs> <laughs> I for sure have people that aren't fans that I can I can ask for gigs all day long, and they're like, nope. But um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it it sucks to to make an enemy in this scene because it, it is so interconnected. So it can be tough. You know, it can mm -hmm. be really tough. Like. Um, because, you know, and, and everyone takes sides in this scene, which I always think is, is kind of crazy. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's never about your personal experiences. It's about, you Business. know, oh, well, my friend doesn't like him. So it's very, it can be very high school -y. And, um, very. you yeah. know, I've, I've found that for me, you know, I haven't been around that long. Um, but I found that for me, uh, my big thing is, you know, how do you treat me, you know? <laughs> and, and you can kind of you can kind of tell the genuine people from the not genuine people too, you yeah. know. And but but I have to admit, you know, even I have talked to and 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 hung out with people, you know, because I knew that they booked, you know. And yeah. um, I mean, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like who they were. Yeah. But I've been nice to people to their face because you know. And for me. I look at it as it's customer service, you know, it's, you know, I don't like everybody at my day job, but you got to be nice to them. You got to be professional. It's about being professional more than anything else. It's not about, yep. it's not about friends. It's about, this is a professional thing, yep. you know? So it's a business, it's business. It's always business. So, but also, but also remember too, you know, one, 1 1% of your success is you and 99% of your success is your peers. Mm -hmm. Always remember well, that too. I don't believe that, but um, I don't necessarily believe that. I think it's it's mostly you and how you and because it's for me anyway. It's 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 you and it's how you deal with the world and it's how you see the world and it's how you work with the world and it's how you mm -hmm. you make that world work for you. You know. Yeah. And um, you know, it's it's a lot of it has to do with you know and and it. it it's not about friends. I mean, a nope. lot of people, you know, you know who the people that are just tagging along are. You know yep. who they are, you know? Yep. They get booked just because they're tag-alongs, and, and everyone knows who those people are. Or they get booked because people like them as yep. people, but not necessarily as talent. Yep. And, um, and you know, you everyone knows who those people are. And, and I might even be one of those people. I don't know. I, I don't want to claim to be so great or whatever. <laughs> you know, I just keep plugging along, doing my thing, hoping that I can make people laugh and, and have good sets and, you know, make good connections. And, and, you know, honestly, in this scene, I know who the people that I feel like are genuine and awesome are. And those are the people that I, I uh, you know, in my heart, I know who those people are. So I don't have to worry about who's not, and you, and you know who's not, and those are the people that you just, you know, that's, it's a professional relationship, and yep. that's it, and you don't let it be anything else, and, you know, hopefully I won't ever have that problem where I'll have someone who thinks I'm their arch nemesis, but <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is, sometimes it's good to have an arch nemesis, because yeah. you can, you, it drives you, you know? Yeah. So um, there's, there's a couple people in the scene that, uh, you know, I'm like, that bitch or that, that asshole, I don't think he's even funny. Like, you know, and in my head, it's my arch nemesis because I'm like, I'm going to book more shows. I'm going to get better gigs. Like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but uh, ironically, it has nothing to do with them. They're perfectly nice people. I just am like, you are not as funny as me. And like, you, I turn them into a... a a nemesis, and then that helps drive me a little bit harder. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go. That's what I got going. 
<laughs> so when he, I when I see those people in person, I'm like, you're just such a nice person. But you know, in my head, I'm like, ah, but you should not be getting those kids. Like. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Evie, uh, you, you can't roast me for fun? For, uh, I, you know, I, I honestly don't know. I don't think I could. I don't think I could because um, I don't know where your level of being okay is. I think, I think for me, the, I could probably roast somebody that was a really, like, good friend that I, I knew intimately. I knew very, very, very well. Like, I know you, but I don't know you. I, you know, I don't hang out with you all the time, so mm -hmm. I don't, like, for instance, I can do impressions of some of my friends, and yeah. I, I love just teasing the hell out of them, but uh, I don't know where your limit is where you would be okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that because of that, I wouldn't do it, because I don't want to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. I feel like the closer you are to somebody, the more you can, you can kick their ass, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, t I'll tell you... I'll tell you what my boundaries are. I don't like yeah. it. I don't like it when my weight is made fun of and my Osperger syndrome. But like, if you want to make fun of my big hands and my big feet, you can do that. You know. <laughs> and and I also have an Audi belly button. You can make fun of that oh, too. Gosh. <laughs> well, that doesn't leave a lot. But <laughs> I was actually going to make fun of your limp, but that's not very nice. <laughs> Oh, you can do that too. It's not like you don't know you have one. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> you can make fun of that. <laughs> Master the plan. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think, uh, you know, my, I think my, my, uh, I, what I usually do is I just love to do impressions of people when I, you know, I do lots of impressions of my friends and that's, and they're just like, dude, you know, and I, I have this thing where I memorize other people's material all the time. Right. Um, and uh, it's funny, too, because I'll be talking to my husband. I'll be like, he'll be like which, which comic is that? I'm like, you know, the one she does the she does this, the, the joke about this and this. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, how do you remember people's material? And I'm like, you know, if it's a good joke, I will memorize your joke. You yeah. know, and I'll be like, wow, that was a really good joke. But, you know, yeah. I always feel like if you hear something that makes you laugh out loud, um, then, you know, remember it because you're going to remember why it's funny. You know, what, what, what makes it funny? You know, is it yeah. the irony? Is it the way it's told? Is it the, the look on your face? Is it, what is it? You know, you can always take something from uh, uh, comedy, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing when you love comedy, you know, um, yeah. I love comedy. You love comedy? Love comedy. I love it so much. Me too. Me too. I think it's the coolest, the weirdest um, form of art. Uh, I mean, my uh, one of my very best friends in the world. He is. Uh, he works at Beach Blanket Babylon, and um, he's he's on the tech crew, and he's he's the prop master. He he designs props. He runs the show. Everything. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, he he started telling his friends at the show. I've met a lot of them because I've been to his Christmas parties. So, um, he started telling his friends on the show, yeah, you know, Erie's doing stand up, and uh, he's like, you know, it's really funny because every single one of them says, oh God, I would never do that. I'm like, really? They would never do that. They're on stage six nights a week, fucking singing, dancing jumping around in crazy ass costumes with giant wigs yep. and they would not do stand up and he's like, Oh yeah, they're all like, Oh hell, hell fucking no, I would never do that And I'm just like, Why? And he says it's because it's different. It's different when somebody else writes the lines, the songs, the dance moves, they put you in a costume and you just have to go out there and make it work. And he's like, But you know, I, I think what a lot of people don't know is that the fact that you have to write your own jokes and then practice them and then tune them, tune them, tell them on, tell them on stage and then tune them to what you think is going to work. Add stuff, take stuff out, figure out the timing, figure out the look on your face, what you're going to do, where you're going to stand, how you look at the audience, and then go out there all by yourself with a fucking microphone 
and get people to laugh, which is an involuntary thing. People don't laugh on cue. <laughs> it's not like you see a, you see a, pup, a, a sick puppy and you cry. They're laughing and laughing and being and, and laughing is involuntary and you don't know what's going to trigger it. Yeah. And the fact that you go up there and you try to get a whole room to do this mm -hmm. uh, is insane. <laughs> yeah. And his actor friends are like, I would never fucking do that in a million years. And I'm like, I would never go on stage and dance around like an idiot. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, what you guys do is crazy. And um, I don't know why we do this. And But I have to say that uh, there's no bigger high than coming off the stage after a good set. Um, and being like, wow, I fucking killed it tonight. Yeah. It's the best thing. It's it's a, it's a drug I'll never get. I'll never get over. You know. Mhm. Mm I'm so glad because you are certainly talented, and I am a huge fan. Even though I've only seen you, you know, a couple times last few years, but I really think you're going to do some really good things with it, Evie. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Of course. Of I course. Really do. What's what's your favorite yeah. What's your favorite joke of all time? My favorite joke of all time is not my joke. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> my favorite joke of all time is, um, is uh, oh my God, it was on Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. and it is, uh, oh my God, why can't I think of their names now? It was Tina Fey, and uh, I can't think of her name, the um, blonde chick that was on there that's not on there anymore, and uh, Amy Poehler. Uh, Amy Poehler. Yeah. Amy Poehler, yeah. I just remember when you said Amy. Um, so Amy Fuller and Tina Fey, and they were doing the news, and um, they said, oh, uh, they said, we're, we're just going to act out uh, what happened. And so Tina Fey said, um, she said, uh, uh, okay, uh, I'm dialing. And, and uh, she goes, bring, bring. And then Amy Fuller says, uh, says uh, hello, 911, what's your emergency? And Tina Fey says, uh, help, <coughs> my parents attacking me. And, and she goes, but my parents are attacking me. And then suddenly, and then they heard, my parents are attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Can, 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 you, can you give me, can you give me your address? And he goes, and she goes, happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> and strangely, that is my favorite joke. Tell <laughs> yes. my parents are attacking me. That's my favorite joke. And it makes me laugh every single time. My, my you know, it's not my joke. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite joke? <laughs> this one Eddie Murphy said on Delirious uh, to a couple 13-year-olds in the audience. Um, a bear and a rabbit are taking a shit in the woods. The bear says to the rabbit, excuse me, sir, do you have a problem with shit sticking to your fur? The rabbit says no, so the bear wiped his ass with the rabbit. Uh, yep, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that joke. That's a good joke. It's a really good joke. I, I like the joke because it really pulls the rug out from the listener, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I have my own second punchline, I say, and then the rabbit died from the stink. Oh, <laughs> so sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sad. Where, where, do your, uh, where do you feel like your jokes come from? Do they come from every day, just thinking up stuff, or... Well, you know, in the, be in the beginning, I used to, you know, carry a notepad with me and I would just, you know, um, you know, constantly write, you know, every day and stuff it's just about, you know, my sex life or pop culture or whatever. And I still do jokes about that. But now it's just like I don't have the time to carry a notepad and write every day. It's just like if I get a funny thought, I write it down <clears throat> and that's how I, I uh, bring it to the stage, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you do a lot of stuff from your from your life, or not really, like uh, personal stuff, or? Occasionally, yeah, but now, yeah. but now because I'm I'm starting to adapt this persona on my podcast as this fanboy and stuff. I'm doing like a lot more pop culture stuff now. Mm, okay, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Have you? I was curious. Have you auditioned for the Burbank Comedy Festival? I haven't. No. Yeah, it's every December at Rooster Tea Feathers. They have the audition. I did it in 2015. I I was not ready. 
like I thought I was. I, I had just gotten out of the hospital after my accident, and I fucking, I'm competing with so many other people, and uh, my friend Tina Allen Gallo, she got in, and she was like, to me, the only one who deserved to get in. All the others were not ready, I felt, you know? Mm-hmm. But I didn't get in, but I'm, I'm going to do it again uh, this year. I, I decided not to do it last year and the year before because I just didn't think I was ready, but now I feel like I'm ready to do it, and I think... I think you have a good chance if you decide to do it. Yeah, I'd be into it. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll, I've gotten into a couple of festivals this year, which I'm really excited about. So um, I just did the San Diego Comedy Festival. Oh, nice. Um, and then I got into the Sacramento Comedy Competition, so I'm excited about that. That's coming up at the end of the month. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I realize that, you know, um, doing festivals is a good way to get to get out there, especially if you're doing it in other towns and stuff, um, mm-hmm. so that you can kind of uh, get seen by more people. So hopefully that'll that'll come to fruition, and you know I'll get I get out there a little bit more and get a little bit closer to, um, you know, and you know it's funny because people will say, uh, "Where do you see yourself in five years?" And I'm like, you know, it's not really about that. It's 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 about the journey. It's right. about you know, I have I have goals that I set out to do every year. I have this weird thing where every year I write down, you know, ten things that I want to get done in that year, and it's super important that I I work towards those goals. and And there are always weird goals that, you know, doing doing a, a certain club that I've never done before. You know, uh, this year Sacramento Punchline was was one of my big goals because I hadn't done that yet. Mm-hmm. And uh, and ironically, I'm doing three shows there this year. I've already done one. I'm doing two more. Um, you know, so it's just it's just uh, little things like that. Just you know, trying to hit those those markers for myself and see where I go from there. And um, you know, just just yeah. make make something and make it make it specific. Whatever it is, you know, it doesn't have to be. A Netflix, a Netflix special, yes. <laughs> but it could be a thirty-minute special that you shot yourself and threw on YouTube. You know. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of and doing. And go from there. You know what I mean? And then go from there. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> oh yeah. I was uh, curious, uh, Evie, uh, on the personal side. What color are your toenails painted? Uh, they're silver right now. They're silver. <laughs> I have pink, mm-hmm. I have pink right now. Right on. <laughs> yep. Next time I'm in the Bay, will, uh, will you go to the salon with me? Uh, yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. I don't, um, usually, I honestly don't get my, I don't do mani petties. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've only had two in my entire life. And uh, dye my own hair. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't uh, do my own facial. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't, that's not where I spend my money, usually. <laughs> Yeah. But let me know when you're in the Bay Area. We could hook up and go to a mic. How about that? <laughs> oh, I would love that. That would be awesome. Sounds good. Sounds good. So do you do you have any um, upcoming gigs you want to plug? Sure. Um, oh, gosh. You know what? Let me get my... Uh, so it, um, Sacramento Punchline, I am there on um, Thursday. Oh, I'm so sorry. Not Sac- So Sacramento Punchline, I'm there on the 13th. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm doing uh, Last Unlimited in Sacramento yeah. um, on the 7th, and I have a show, um, actually I have a bunch of shows. I have a show in San Francisco at the Milk Bar on the 8th, mm-hmm. and um, the big one I have coming up, I have Sacramento Comedy Competition at the Punchline in Sacramento, 22nd and 23rd of June, you guys come out and see it, it's going to be really good. Well, 23rd if I make it to the next round, but... The twenty second for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll for sure be there for the for the first part of it. Well, we'll see if I end up in the second part, but I'm for sure there the first night. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> well. Yeah, you guys come out and see me. You know. Yeah, come out and see Evie. She delivers. She is hilarious. Um, Evie, I thank you so much for taking the time today, and I just want you to know I'm just so proud of you. I love those schedules you post on Facebook. I'm glad you're so busy working in, in the comedy and stuff. I'm so I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. And you guys go to uh, 
Diamond Comedy on Facebook, and they'll have all my shows posted. Um, Erie Diamond, uh, Twitter, and Instagram, if you guys want to check out, see where I'm going to be at next. So, you know, come on out, see if you hate me, see if you like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone will love you. I always you. make it a challenge. <laughs> if you hate me, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, Evie, we'll, we'll talk again. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Thank okay, you. Okay, sounds good, Tommy. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay. Okay, talk to you later. Yep, bye-bye. Bye. Well, there you have it. Evie Erie Diamond. Ain't she a sweetheart? Thank you so much, Evie. That was a really fun, thought-provoking interview about the Bay Area stand-up comedy scene. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, add me as a friend on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook, and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past, because the present sucks. Later, dudes. <laughs>